Hey, what's up guys? We are here with a, another build order tutorial coming at you today with a TVP build. This is probably becoming one of my more standard builds to do in TVP. It's very similar to the 111 build that I have on the channel currently. Um, it opens up a little bit differently, but it does end up relatively in the same place. You do end up getting a Raven. You end up getting tanks for zoning and just defensive capabilities all around. Um, so to start things off, we'll just jump into it here. Go on gas first. Uh, we will be opening up, sorry, double Hellion. Uh, the basic gist of this build is that we go for four Hellions and then we either get a medevac to drop them or we get a liberator or we just run the Hellions right in and skip the medevac altogether. So you go gas first into your normal Racks gas FE or gas racks FE fixed it nailed it. Um, so I do SCV scout in TVP currently. Um, a lot of Protoss players still will do proxy gates, still will do other cheeses, still will do cyber first adept all ins crazy stargate play. So I like to scout it to make sure that he is building a base. Um, this Protoss messed up, lost his probe, um, which is good. <laughs> Usually they'll try to deny your natural, so I'll send two workers down here, but since I killed it, we just get to take it for free. This SCV, all he's doing, all he's doing is making sure that exists. If it exists, excellent, go home. If it doesn't exist, check if he has both gas geysers, because that'll tell us if he's going proxy gate or if he's going something a little bit harder. Um, so what I mean by that is if he were to have one gas and he didn't have a nexus, and he had his cyber core and all that business, then he's probably getting a proxy gateway on the map or something on the map um, because he should have the Nexus by the time you get there if you 17 scout. Um, and then if he has two gas geysers, then it's gonna be something a little bit more tech heavy, usually a Stargate, sometimes a double robo build. It just lets you know that this Reaper should be scouting for that instead. So what I do with the Reaper is I send it across the map this game. A lot of people are just keeping it at home these days. I was doing that for a while, but the, the reasoning that I send the Reaper out now is when I actually get to the Protoss base, you're going to run into the Adept or the Stalker. And if he does go Adept, he's either going to shade the Adept past you to try to deny your command center. And if you see that happen, you can just turn the Reaper around and go home. And if he doesn't do that, then you get to keep the Adept at his base, which is excellent because he doesn't get to get any scouting done. He doesn't get to harass you. And just, you know, it's good for scouting as well. You get to actually see what the Protoss is doing. If you can jump into the main base, that's good too. You, you want to determine if it's like an early Stargate or if he's going Twilight or Robo. It's nice to know these things. It makes defending anything quite easier for you. Um, so back at home, like I mentioned, we're doing, we're going to be swapping these for Hellions. This came down after the factory since we missed that. Um, and we keep going. Uh, so yeah, this gets swapped. We throw in a star, star port instantly, uh, orbital command. It's essentially the same opener as your average TVZ game. It's not actually any different. Um, we do get a tech lab on that barracks. What we're going to be doing with the barracks is we're going to be swapping it with the factory after the four Hellions get built. And that's going to allow us to get really fast tanks and marines, which will be good. Because usually the Protoss will make a lot of stalkers and try to kill you. <laughs> and if you didn't know, tanks are good at killing stalkers. <laughs> so there you go. This guy does send his stalker across the map. Um, Hellions can deal with a stalker and an adept. If you were to send both at once, like an adept and a stalker, like you might have to pull back and wait for your four Hellions to come out. I think I do actually pull back here. I realized that this wasn't a good engagement to take. And then he actually ends up coming here with two stalkers. Let's go to my vision. That way it's more authentic. <laughs> um, so yeah, we swap these. Um, I do get a medevac. Like I said, the order here is medevac, liberator, and then tech lab raven. See, this Protoss tried to be aggressive, but Hellions are actually pretty good at killing gateway units. Fun fact. As long as it's not too many gateway units. Um, so, yeah, you get a liberator now. I got supply blocked. You're supposed to make two depots before this happens. I just wasn't used to it because with the Hellion build, the Hellions take up more supply quicker. So I was just off of my cycle here. Um, 
So yeah, throw down a bunch of depots. <laughs> like a panic depot and then a supply drop, which is bad. So just get two depots and you're fine. Um, so this is also a 3cc build, which you're seeing a lot more of in TVP right now. Since a lot of Protosses like to get fast thirds as well, Terrans have been kind of struggling to keep up with economy. So you're seeing more, more of these 3cc builds. So you do obviously try to get some damage done. I don't think I get much done this game. And that's surprising because usually you get at least five, like a couple free workers, but I think I killed like three. Yeah, <laughs> It's not that good. Since these were dead, I used this medevac to kind of scout his third base. That's something you can keep in mind. It's not a bad idea to check so you know what your state in the game is. Um, so back at home, uh, you make, so the, the ordering here is for the factory. I'm going to pause because this is a lot. The factory is going to make three tanks. The starport, just to recap, it made a medevac and then it made a liberator and then it's going to make a tech lab and then it's going to make a raven. <laughs> And then the barracks just makes marines. Uh, the liberator can obviously just go siege up probes. It's usually a good little thing to do a little bit extra harassment since the build lines up really well by doing it this way. I get an NG bay this game because I wasn't entirely sure what he was doing. It kind of looked like DTs at first glance, so I just got this as like a safety for turrets. But like I said, you get a raven with this build, so... There are some DT timings that come before the Raven get out, so that's why I was a little bit worried. He tries to push me, but it doesn't work. You just siege up your tanks. Um, the idea with the tanks is on most maps, there's usually a high ground position that covers the natural like this. And then the second tank I'll put in the natural, and then the third tank I'll put in the main. The third one goes in the main because blank stalkers sometimes will like to jump in here and kill things, but if you have a tank, then they can't, so that's also pretty good. So we're gonna get a third tank, I hope. Yeah, we did it, nice job. Liberators killing probes, killing things for free. I could have microed this better, but you know, I was lazy. So what's gonna happen here, and this is where we get technical, um, is this is good. these two buildings are gonna swap with these two, and then they're both gonna get their own reactor. And then the barracks are going to get stim and combat shields. And keep in mind that we're already working on our plus one. If we weren't getting an NG bay when we did, um, we would just throw down two NG bays right around now-ish. And then we'd get both upgrades at the same time. Uh, you ca I, don't, I don't know if I mentioned the timing of the third CC, so I will now. The third command center comes down after, like before these two barracks. That's the important part. You'll naturally get about 400 minerals. So it'll be pretty obvious when to build it. I don't have the exact timing. You can maybe rewind and find it, but I don't really go by timings that way. I just go by when I can afford things. And then the two gas geysers here come after the barracks as well. I'm not I'm not catching these for you very well, but I'll upload the replay and post it below if anything is questionable to you guys and you don't know exactly when to get it. I think I executed this build pretty decently except for this one supply block. So we do throw down our extra 4th and 5th racks as well. We're going to be getting our orbital, just preparing for the mid game. We do have our raven, and I'm going to use it. I'm using it right now just to look for observers, because like I said, sometimes they'll try to blink into your base. And the only way they're going to do that is with a warp prism or an observer. So it's important to look for that kind of thing. I could actually go out and look for one, but I saw that there were stalkers here, so it's a little bit dangerous to do that. You don't want to get caught out by blink stalkers. Especially your Raven. Like, you, if you lose your Raven, that's pretty bad. It's a very strong unit for the push that we're going to be doing. So, getting Medivacs, Widow Mines, Stim comes first, then Combat Shields. I'm just building them as I can afford it. Like, the gas gets a little bit tight, so it's okay if you start Combat Shields later because it syncs up with Stim. Combat Shields takes way less time to research. And then I'm just, like, sieging up taking my third base basically the timing is like around 130 supply or when i have three to four medevacs ish and i have stim and combat shields and all my upgrades that's when i do the first push out um yeah, there's not much more there i i should be getting the armory and the ng bay halfway through the armor upgrade although i don't know if i actually remember to get the upgrade or not that would be upgrade 
very awkward. Um, from here, I'm trying to think what else. You would usually just add another starport, and then you'd either get a lot of Vikings or a lot of Liberators. I'm trying not to go too deep into just, like, TVP. <laughs> I'm just trying to focus on the build order, really. You just take your third base. You can take your gases. I don't know why I didn't take my gases. I guess I didn't execute it that well. <laughs> LOL. Rip. Oh, I did. Guys, look. I'm a real StarCraft player. I built the things. Wow. Good job. So, we're waiting. I should have moved out by now. I should move out. Move out. Do it. Fast forward. Alright, good job. So, how this engagement works. Raven has a cool ability, and it's called the Anti-Armor Missile. This does a lot of stuff to Protoss. I think it reduces the shield as well now. Reduces the armor and shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so this this is good, <laughs> especially for Zealots. And also, because it only costs 75, you also have enough to do the Interference Matrix. And I think this guy actually goes Colossus, and the Raven can disable the Colossus. And the best part about disabling Colossus is this makes them derp really hard, and the Colossus will literally run into your army. <laughs> like, it'll M move into you if you try to fight it. So it's actually pretty good. So that's why you don't want to lose it to Blink Stalker's early game. I'm going to zoom out so we get the full effect here. So I go for the anti armor on the Zealots because those are the juicy units that have the most tanky, you know, they're tanky as hell, so you want to get rid of the armor. I'm starting to chase it. The Protoss is doing what he should be doing and backing away. Like, he shouldn't be trying to take an engagement when he's literally under this spell. So, But as you can see, what this what this Colossus is doing is he, he, he keeps pulling it back, but he keeps trying to run into me. But now we're at the point where I'm at in this position where I can just siege up. And then he has to engage into me, and then I still have enough. I think I have enough for another interference. I do. I actually, fun fact, I don't have combat shields. I didn't wait because I, I researched it too late. I should have combat shields, obviously. Don't do this push without it. It's very bad. Um, so yeah, we just kind of kill him here, I think. There's not much to it. He dies. We did it. Good job. And he left. So yeah, that's the build. If you guys have any questions about it, feel free to ask in the comments down below and I will get back to you in one to two business days. That's right, it's no longer three business days because streamer's a full-time memer now. Um, so yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to smishity smash that like button. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm done. We're just gonna leave, okay, bye.